This video is brought to you by Rhino Shield. So three months ago, I posted a video about my ultimate iPhone home screen. Quarter of a million views and quite a few requests later, I'm here with my iOS 16 version of the ultimate home screen. The key app in this setup is Ouija and the rest of the organization of the setup is based on some improvements over the last setup that I've used for a few months. For the most part, it is a mix of standard apps and the principle of eliminating redundancy, keeping things condensed in just one home screen and of course having easy access to pretty much everything I use. I have the home screen, the app drawer on the right and the widgets page on the left. As you can expect from the title, I'm running iOS 16, but this setup will work just as good on iOS 15. Looking at the structure of the homepage, I have a large widget widget, which I promise I'll get to in details. Below it, I have seemingly three rows of apps, although only two rows are real, which I'll explain in a moment as well. Among the apps, I have two folders, one of which I keep in the dock. If I swipe left to the widget page, I have four small square widgets and two mediums below them, but in actuality, there are 14 widgets just on that page. I use stacks throughout as well as a limited number of shortcuts and focus modes. Unlike my previous setup, which I'll link at the end of this video, I don't have any blank widgets this time around because I removed most of these sensitive widgets that might reveal personal information like photos. As always, I don't use the smart rotate feature nor widget suggestions and I always keep my phone in dark mode. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? If we open the widgets page on the top left, I keep the stats information in three stacked widgets. I have my ring stats, which display how active I am throughout the day. Below it, I have my default Apple battery widget to tell me the level of charge on my devices. And a new addition is the sleep stats that I recently got into as a means to control my migraines. On the top right, I keep two email widgets from the same email client Hey and weirdly the same inbox. In most cases, I keep the list view of my inbox as a way to quickly glance at what's going on throughout the day. Note that I check my emails rarely and on purpose. On slower days, since I tend to keep my inbox at zero most of the time, I switch to Hey's single email widget which shows me more info on the latest inside my inbox. Below the stats stack, I keep my music and books players. I use Apple Music for the most part, but I might switch to YouTube Music since it provides better playlists sometimes. I love listening to audiobooks, so Audible is a must of course, and when commuting I might switch to some podcasts every once in a while. On the right of the listening stack, I keep a stack of quick notes. For starters, I have a quick notes notion page, which I use to dump all sorts of thoughts and ideas that I might later on disperse in the appropriate tools. For example, as I am experiencing iOS 16, I'm jotting down my initial impressions, which I'll compile in a video and I'll place a link for in the cards once it's out. Below the Notion page, I have a notes note for my workouts where I log my everyday activities and another notes widget, this time a folder that takes me directly to my work-related notes. In most cases, these are templates for quick replies. The first medium widget is my shortcuts widget, which holds four of my most used shortcuts. If I tap on AirPlay, I get a drop down that allows me to choose where I want to broadcast whatever I'm listening to. If I tap on AirPods, I'm immediately connected to my AirPods via the iPhone. Despite the AirPods connecting automatically, sometimes there might be a delay if I want to switch from, let's say, the Apple TV to my AirPods. So this is perhaps the most used shortcut. I have two other shortcuts that I talked more in my previous video, where one triggers a focus mode that I call Rec, which is like do not disturb. I use this mode when recording where I get no notifications from any app and I also have a new folder appearing on my home screen, replacing my home apps folder. This folder holds my camera related apps. If I switch off recording focus, that folder disappears again and I'm back to getting a handful of selected notifications and phone calls, of course. Below the shortcuts widgets, I have my BMW medium widget, which gives me quick interactions with my car. I can lock or unlock the car, sound the horn, turn on the headlights and my most used feature, the ability to precondition the cabin. 
On the very bottom, I have the default hourly weather widget, which would have been nice if I had the option to switch to weekly forecast in that particular size. Before we take a grip and understand the situation on the homepage, I'd like to mention a brand new grip by RhinoShield. RhinoShield is known for creating the most protective and custom phone cases, and they just launched their brand new phone grip. With it, I can easily grip my phone and comfortably operate it in any way I like, ideal for those lying on the couch moments. It is an excellent accessory, for people that use the largest of phones since it allows one-handed operation. Also, it works as a kickstand for both portrait and landscape modes. It comes in two sizes, Grip Mini and Grip Max. It's durable, typical for Rhino Shield, endlessly customizable, and the cherry on top is that it's made from 85% recycled materials. You can combine the grip with any of Rhino Shield's cases with the adhesive version, or you can really create grip greatness with Grip Max for MagSafe and the help of one of the most powerful magnetic pull forces on the MagSafe compatible accessories market. Get Rhino Shield Grip with 20% off in the first week and 10% off after using the code This is E and clicking on the first link in the description below. So, I'm not going to waste your time going in details about my apps, since they're pretty much self-explanatory. I'll just point out that since I now have too many smart devices at my home, I was just forced to create a folder for them since almost none work with HomeKit where I can control, you know, the appliances with HomeMap. Another note would be the instant messaging folder on the dock, which, like last time, I used to reference in case I have a red bubble in any of the messaging apps. So as you can see, the entire theme of this setup was inspired by the overlapping homepage lock screen abilities of iOS 16. I really like how lock screen is capable of simulating depth effect, so I decided to move this theme inside. Now, it took me some time, but I managed to create this large widget widget from scratch, which serves multiple purposes. Before I showcase it, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to create a tutorial on how I build it. For those who are intimidated and just want to have it right now, don't worry. I packed it into a product which you can purchase on my website and support a creator. So the first row of app icons where you can see the Files app, Photos, Twitter and YouTube are actually simulated iOS icons that are part of the widget. They work as any other app icon. You can tap them and you can open the app. This allows me to have an odd number of rows, giving me the freedom to use a large widget canvas while keeping more of my most used apps in just one screen. Above them, I have my favorite weekly calendar widget, which showcases the weekdays and dates and also works as a shortcut to my calendar. If I tap it, it opens my calendar straight away. I'm extremely proud how I was able to overlap and create this semi-translucent depth effect similar to what Apple does on the lock screen. Above the calendar, on the top right, I have the current temperature outside and the weather conditions in the form of an icon that changes accordingly. On the left side, I have three more buttons that lead me to my most used actions. On the very top, if I click home, I go to my home app, where I can control the lights at home. Below it, I have quick tasks button, which triggers a shortcut that takes me to the things app, which I use for my to-dos. Now in the product on my website, I made this button to trigger the reminders app. But if you know how to work with widget, you can just change it to whatever you like. Below that, I have a button for a new note. This large widget can be swapped with my large things widget, which displays all my current tasks for the day. That gives me yet another additional way to quickly create a new task. Now this setup is almost perfect. I say almost because there are a few things that we can't bypass around the widget. The first tiny issue for some is that when you tap on the four app icons in the widget, you can go to the app via the widget, which means that you witness a slight delay because the action has to go through widget first. The second concern, if it's a concern at all, is that you can't have any notification bubbles in that setup since the app icons are not actual app icons. Now, this is not a problem for me because by default, I have all notifications for those apps turned off, but still it's something to keep in mind, which might determine the apps you choose to keep there. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want me to make a tutorial video on how to create this widget, let me know in the comments below. For those who decide to support the channel and purchase the widget, feel free to ping me on Twitter if you have any questions. Now, I've tried to create a comprehensive readme file but still if you enjoyed this video be sure to check out my previous home screen setup which is just as relevant like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter and as always it's been an absolute pleasure this is z over and out